Hello students, this is a continuation of looking at the classic atomic experiments, focusing upon Ernest Rutherford, his gold foil experiment, and the model of the atom that came from it. To remind us, picking up from John Dalton and his atomic theory, it was believed that the atom was a solid sphere. The, Dalton's model is referenced as the billiard ball model because it was solid through and through. J.J. Thompson, with his cathode ray tube experiment, discovered the electron. Now, what he referred to his model as was the plum pudding model. Now, the only thing he found was that every atom contained extraordinarily small negative particles called electrons. He had no idea how they were arranged. He just knew they were in there. They were certain that atoms were neutral. So if atoms contained these negative pieces, there must be something positive there. They had not a single shred of evidence as to what was positive. So what Thompson predicted was these negative electrons existed in a positive cloud or a, a you know positive sphere plum pudding now that is a famous english dessert in america we refer to this as the chocolate chip cookie dough model if you are enjoying chocolate chip cookie dough the dough represents the positive sphere the chocolate chips are the randomly placed electrons as chocolate chips are not consistently distributed in your cookie dough. Rutherford was actually the student of Thompson. He wanted to continue Thompson's work finding additional evidence to confirm Thompson's model. Remember though, Millikan was working along um, you know, simultaneously at the same time and with his oil drop experiment determined the exact charge on a single electron. So, to the gold foil experiment. Gold is malleable and it can be pounded into extraordinarily thin sheets. I'm going to just use our imagination to imagine that the gold foil was one atom thick, but it was probably uh, maybe about a hundred or so. Very, very thin. Could not be handled with the, the naked um, hand. Now, remember, Rutherford was trying to confirm that his teacher was correct. That the atom was this positive cloud with randomly scattered tiny little pieces. So, to confirm that, the age of radioactivity was just appearing. They were, Madame Curie was just really doing her work, Henry Becquerel, they didn't really understand radioactivity, but um, Rutherford got his hand on a radioactive rock that threw out what we call alpha particles. Now he had no idea exactly what the alpha particles were, but what he knew was that they were positive in charge and they were much, much larger than the electron that Thompson and Millikan had determined the mass of and the relative size. So the alpha particle would be like a basketball compared to the thumbtack or, you know, a, a paper punch out of your, your three-hole puncher on your notebook paper. So this was incredibly small, uh, incredibly large compared to these tiny little electrons. Now, he knew that the radioactive rock was throwing out these alpha particles in every direction. So to focus them at the gold foil, he put them through a screen, and so he produced a beam of alpha particles. And what was predicted was that these alpha particles would go straight through the atom because there was nothing of substance there to, to dissuade them from traveling in straight paths. So how would he know that the alpha particles made their way through there was a zinc sulfide photographic film that w would show where the alpha particle intersected. Now, they knew the rate 
So if 50 came out, they would expect 50 spots. However, the results were, were quite different than what was expected. Now, three things. One, the majority of the alpha particles traveled straight through, as expected. However, upon first exposure, 50 came through, but there weren't 50 dots. So they actually had to extend the film further around the gold foil. And what they were finding is that some were go going off at an angle. So few, in fact, very few, very few, we're just going to say were deflected. So if they sent 50 through, Maybe 48 went through. Two went off to the side. Well, it just so happened every now and again, they would send maybe 1,000 through. 990 would go straight. Nine would go off to the side, and they would lose one. They couldn't find one. So they extended the film even further. And what they found was that some of the alpha particles we're coming straight back. Hmm. So very, very few, um, we'll just say, sent back toward the source. All right, so what were the conclusions? First, Thompson was sort of right. Majority of the alpha particles st traveled straight through. The majority of the atom is empty space. Kind of freaky when you think about it. The majority of the atom is empty space. Now, what can we conclude when very few were deflected and very few were sent back? Now, these were huge compared to the electrons. So, there was not a competition, like a math truck and a poor frog on the road. That frog is going to get smushed. So, it wasn't the electrons. So, there must have been something else there. In fact, for it to become come straight back, there must have been something incredibly dense, incredibly dense inside the atom. Now, based upon um, you know the analysis of where the alpha particles were going, what they found was that the particles that were being sent back were coming to the center of the atom, the center of these gold atoms. So, what would send the particle back? it must be encountering something extraordinarily dense. What about the ones that were being deflected? Well, it was really predicted that if they were going to encounter the dense core, even the edge, they would be sent back. So it wasn't that these guys that were deflected were hitting the, the edge of this core. The thought was these positive particles were encountering another positive charge within the atom and they were being rejected. They were being repelled because like charges repel. So this core was positively charged. Oh, so we need to revisit the atom. What Rutherford found was, sorry, Thompson, it's not a positive cloud. It's a positive core. Now, that tiny dot is ridiculously large compared to the electron cloud. So there's a neat video if you want to look at you know, some analogies about the size of the nucleus compared to the size of the electron cloud. Um, but what Rutherford found is the nucleus is incredibly small compared to the electron cloud. So it's no longer a positive cloud, it's a positive dense core with the electrons randomly scattered. He called his model the nuclear model. Nuclear for center, which of course he named the nucleus. Rutherford first discovered the nucleus with his gold foil experiment. It wasn't until years later that then he discovered protons. 
a gentleman by the name of Chadwick discovered neutrons. It wasn't until years later that we understood what the nucleus was actually made of. But this is our evolution. So advancement of the atom came with advances in technology and experimentation. So we transformed from believing that the atom was the smallest bit of matter to realizing, oh, the atom is made first of electrons, but there's also a positive positive core that with the electrons is giving neutral atoms. The majority of the atom is empty space. There's an incredibly dense core that Rutherford later showed was made of protons, and we now know there are neutrally charged particles also in the nucleus called neutrons.